What's up everyone, Abs from the Finesse Angler here today. Good to see you all again. Today we're installing a sounder on my PA14 from the garage. This is gonna be the first video from the garage and hopefully not the last. The reason why I've gone with the Lowrance FS9 is because I've done a lot of research and I've seen a few guys out there using it and they've all sworn by it. So I thought I'd go with the same sounder. I found it luckily second hand. So we're going to go and install it and do the best I can. This is going to be my first sounder install, so bear with me as we get into this video. What I had to do was I had to get in contact with HWS, which is Hunter Water Sports in Belmont, and I bought a couple of extras, things like the Burley Pro Connector Protector, there to protect the connectors from the back of your sounder, the Burley Pro Shaft Mount, which I'm going to mount onto the back of the battery, that way we can clip it right into the front hatch, the FPV Pigtail Male, which connects right into the sounder power socket. We got a Burley Pro visor, which is gonna be sitting around the sounder. That way it can protect us from any glare that's coming into the screen. And we also got ourselves a ram mount and the ram mount ball. That way we can mount it on the side of our kayak and have it comfortably wherever we desire. All right, let's get started. So the first step would be to remove the Hobie Guardian transducer shield from underneath the kayak, which is held by three screws. I used the Phillips head screwdriver for this one. I didn't want to go too hard with an impact driver, so a Phillips head screwdriver would be fine. There's three screws. First screw is located on the very top, which is the front of the mount, and the other two are on either side, towards the bottom. This retractable shield is used for when you are about to hit a surface or you are about to beach your kayak. It retracts up into the hull of the kayak, that way you don't damage your transducer. Or alternatively, you can pull the tab cord from next to you in the kayak, which pulls this up manually. And we wanna install this little hooded plate onto the very top of the transducer shield, removing these two little screws here, which will then go into the same place and hold this down. So that's our little hooded piece installed there. We're gonna get our transducer, feed the transducer cable through here, and we're gonna mount the transducer onto this plate up the front here. We've already got some holes pre-drilled cause this kayak was previously owned. Somebody's already had a sounder on there. So I'm lucky enough to already have that pre-drilled. If I didn't have that pre-drilled, this template comes with the transducer. You line this template up to where you want your transducer to sit and you drill out those holes. So we're gonna make sure that we have no tangles in our transducer cable. We're gonna feed our transducer cable straight through that hole there of that little hooded plate. So we're gonna get our transducer and we're gonna put it on the bottom of the plate. We're gonna line it up to where we want to. Like I said, we've already got the holes pre-drilled. So I'm gonna line up the holes. And I'm gonna mount the transducer. What some people do for some added security is you can see these little slots here towards the front of the transducer. They put a cable tie in there just for the added security. I might not do that today. I'll see how we go. If I think we need one, then I'll put one on. Also, people put that Burley Pro Shield right over the transducer. I don't think I need one yet. If I do find the need for one, then I will get one as well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run the transducer cable through the bottom up through this plastic plate. So there is one screw towards the back of the kayak. 
you want to undo that screw. And you've got that cable tied onto this pulley system here. That cable is going to be undone from this pulley system and we're going to connect it onto the bottom of this transducer shield. That way you can retract it by pulling the pulley on the side of the kayak. Now that we have removed this bit of plastic here, we're going to undo that rope. We're going to put the transducer shield underneath and we're going to tie the rope right onto this rope onto the transducer shield that way it can retract up and down by pulling this cable here I've got the guardian plate hanging down from that rope I'm gonna feed the cable from underneath and bring it through this hole the whole transducer cable that way I can secure that guardian plate onto the bottom of the hole and move on to the next step Now that the transducer shield is back onto the bottom of the kayak, we can pull this lever and lock it into place, go underneath and make sure that the transducer has retracted into the hull of the kayak. We run that retractable cable through the pulley that's on the plate that sits on top of the kayak and right down to the transducer shield. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put that screw right back into the top of that plate and we're going to run the cable through the kayak. Now that that's done, we're going to remove the three screws from the top of this rubber piece that allows you to feed wiring through the kayak. We're going to put the screws aside but we're not going to lose them. There is a rubber gasket on the bottom of that too, so we want to try not to lose that as well. Line that up. And we're just going to prepare the center hatch as well, just by removing it, and moving it aside. That way we can feed the cable straight through, bring it out through the center hatch, and work out where we want everything. We're going to remove this rubber gasket from this through hole fitting and put it aside and as you can see here on the through, the through hole fitting on the top of it you've got some rubber that can be removed our cables are going to be ran through there the boys at HWS were kind enough to throw in a couple of these which you can buy as a kit so your cable runs straight through there and keeps everything watertight so we're just going to remove that piece from there we're going to get our cable. We're going to feed our cable through the rubber gasket and through the hole. So our whole cable needs to go through the hole here. Now that we're coming towards the end of it, we just want to make sure we don't kink anything or ruin the cable, just want to try to do it as neat as possible and we will get all the twists out as well once we run the cable all the way through there we go so we're going to line up that rubber gasket we're going to get this little plastic piece from the top that's going to seal it off we're going to put our cable through and we're going to use this little rubber piece, this little rubber grommet to go around the cable and sit inside that plastic piece before we screw it back onto the kayak. So now that everything's back on nice and neat, we're going to put the screws back in. So before I do run the cables through the kayak 
and out through one of these through hole fittings. I've decided to go on the right hand side. I'm right hand dominant and um, I'd like to work with the sounder right next to my right leg. So I'm gonna put this 1.5 inch ram mount, ram ball mount just roughly where I do want the, the um, sounder to sit. Not exactly, but just a rough idea, just so I know how much cable, how much play I should have coming out of that um, through hole fitting. I'm gonna do the same thing by removing the three screws onto this little plastic plate, this little through hole fitting. That way we can run the cable through here and see roughly how much excess we need to come out of the actual kayak. So I'm just pretty much getting an average of where the sounder is going to be sitting. That way I can leave myself enough cable to run through and we can uh, cable tie off these, um, the excess cable that's sitting in the center hatch. That way everything can be neat and tidy. We can then run our power cable and put everything back together and then start worrying about putting the sounder on. Before we forget that, we're going to get the power cable and we're going to run the power cable. The power cable is going to run straight through the front hatch and out from the same hole. As a transducer cable. This is the battery that we'll be using to power the sounder. We're lucky enough to find a 17.5 amp hour second hand from a good friend of mine. So we're just gonna put this in the front hatch. As you can see on the back here, I've got this backing plate from Burley Pro and it connects straight onto the pole that's on the front here. That way it's not gonna get wet, protected. Beautiful. All right, so before I do screw anything back in, we've got the universal ram mount with the plate and the adapting arm. We're gonna put it on. We're gonna try putting the sounder, connecting up the cables, and we're gonna make sure that everything's on nice and sweet. I'm gonna put this on the inside so my line does not get caught up with it. While fishing. And we're just gonna get our sound amount and centralize everything. And get the nuts and bolts all ready to get screwed in. We're just gonna make sure these thumb screws on the back are loose so we can slide it in. And put it into place. Just temporarily, we still got the cover to go onto this as well, the shield. But just for the time being, to see how much cable we need. Everything's all connected up, ready to be fired up for the first time. But first we're going to put the Burley Pro visor on. If you have a look on the top of the sounder, there is um, a couple of tabs, small tabs on the top of the sounder. So we're going to take them out. The second one, and there should be a couple on the bottom as well. They just slide right out. This one as well, you don't want to put too much force, we don't want to break it. We got the Burley Pro Lowrance FS9 visor, suitable for this sounder. So these little tiny Phillips head screws with nylock nuts and washers came with it. 
So if they're that small, we really got to be careful not to lose them. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these little plastic caps back in. There we go. Now this is the moment of truth. We're going to get it all fired up. And it seems like it's working. I just want to thank you guys for watching. That's the first install video I've done on my channel. And I'm hoping for plenty more to come. If you guys did like this video, please like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. I'll see you guys on the next video.